Hi there. Okay, so welcome to Unit 3, Life on Earth. This is key area 1 of Unit 3, and that's going to be about ecosystems. Realistically, this key area is about two main things. Number one, definitions of ecosystem stuff. Number two, food chains and food webs, essentially, to summarize it all into one big chunk. Um, so let's have a look at what we're looking at. This unit is starting with ecosystems. Second key area is distribution of organisms, so how organisms manage to be in certain areas and how we um, how we sample them. Uh, photosynthesis, key area three, so we'll be looking at that process in more detail, so it's time to remember about the chloroplast uh, of the plant cells when we get to that. Energy and ecosystems is a nice short one, followed by food production, which is massive, about fertilizers and pesticides, and then evolution of species to finish off the whole course. So we'll be starting with ecosystems in this particular key area. Okay. The things in ecosystems, we'll be looking at ecological definitions, we'll be looking at food chains, food webs, niches and competitions. So I've split it into these videos in order to try and separate out those particular parts. So this time we'll be looking at ecological terms used to describe organisms. Essentially this is going to be a vocabulary lesson. It's going to be, here's a definition of a thing, uh, memorize it. Okay. Uh, so the things that we're defining is species, biodiversity, population, ecosystem, and community. You need to be able to define these words as well as identify them from their definition. So it's essentially quite a lot of flashcard skills. Common exam questions that come up about this, they tend to be one word answers or they tend to be multiple choice questions where you're trying to find the right definition or the right word that matches the definition in the question. So. For scientific vocabulary, you know by now, there are so many new words you have to learn the meaning of. A really good way to learn this is by using flashcards. The idea is the word written on one side, the definition on the other. Get a pile, a stack of 20 of them or so, and practice saying what's on the other side of the card without looking for it. If you get it right, move it to the correct pile. If you get it wrong, put it back on the bottom of the pile you're working with and go again. It's mindless, brain-numbing repetition, but it does work. Okay, so first word that we're looking at is species. The definition of a species is, it is a group of organisms with similar characteristics who are able to interbreed and produce fertile offspring. Okay, now what fertile offspring means is the offspring are capable of having their own offspring. Okay, so that means these lion cubs here, when they grow up and reach maturity, are able to produce lion cubs of their own. If they were infertile, they would not be able to produce lion cubs of their own. Okay, as an example of this, we've got a horse and a horse. We get a horse as a baby, funnily enough. A donkey and a donkey, we get a donkey. And that donkey should be able to make its own donkey offspring. Okay, however, when we take a horse and a donkey, which are different species, and breed them together, we get a mule. And that mule is sterile. That mule cannot produce offspring of its own. There are, of course, in real life exceptions to the rule, but the biology rule that we're following is two different species. If they manage to produce any offspring, which will be a hybrid, if they manage to produce any offspring, that offspring should be infertile. Okay, um, so horses and donkeys are different species. We can tell that they're different species because they make infertile offspring. Okay, now this helps us quite a lot with species that we don't know if it's a, uh, organisms where we don't know if it's a species or not because they maybe look really different. Take dogs as an example. All dogs are the same species from Chihuahua to Great Dane. Now, obviously, there are a variety of different features of dogs. They do look different, they are different sizes, there are all these kind of differences, but we know they're the same species because when we breed two together, the offspring are fertile. Population, word number two. A population is the numbers or all of the members of a single species present in a given area. The words to focus on there is single species. Okay, So you're looking for all the members of one species. So for example, you could have a population of oak trees in an area, but a population of trees, no, okay? Because trees is more than one species. You could have oak tree and beech tree and ash, and that's my list of trees that I have, okay? Whereas oak trees, that is one species, so yes, you could say that's a population. Community is all of the living populations in a given area. So that's all of the living things. So that includes the plants and the bacteria, insects, large mammals, it includes all of it. So the community is all of the living things in an area. An ecosystem consists of all of the living organisms in a habitat 
and the non-living components with which they interact. So the difference between a community and an ecosystem, a community is only made of living things. An ecosystem is all of the living things and the non-living parts like water and rocks and ground and soil and air and you know all of the, the yeah, all of the non-living bits of an ecosystem that, that make it up. Okay. The crucial things that you're looking for in exam questions are definitions talking about living and non-living. As soon as you're talking about living and non-living, that is ecosystem. Ecosystem is never defined the same way twice, so it's a big frustration for me. Uh, sometimes ecosystem can be referred to as the communities and the abiotic factors. Now, community is all of the living organisms. Abiotic factors we'll get into later, but the idea is abiotic factors are non-living things in an ecosystem. OK, so we're still looking at the idea of living plus non-living equals ecosystem. OK. Here's a sort of diagram that just shows all of this in scale. So you've got a single organism, you've got a population of one species, that's the antelope, you've got the community, which includes the, the vulture, all of the other living things, the trees, the grass, the plants, all of that. And then the ecosystem includes a little wider scope of that, water, rocks, you know, non-living components. Biodiversity is the variety of organisms present in an area. It's a range of different living things you find in an area. So for example, a field full of cows has really low biodiversity because it has two living things in there, cows and grass, okay? Whereas a field with a cow, a pig, a sheep, a chicken, 20 different types of insects, uh, 30 different types of plants, that has high biodiversity because even though the number of living things might be the same as the field of cows, the types of different living things living there are different, okay? And so that's high biodiversity. In life, we like high biodiversity uh, because of reasons things like food chains and food webs. We like options and choices for food chains and food webs. Biodiversity allows for that, okay? So you can pause the video here and take a chance to try and match up all of these definitions and see what you have remembered. I, again, I really recommend you turn these into flashcards. What we're looking at, a species is a group of organisms who are able to interbreed and produce fertile offspring. A population is all of the members of a single species present in an area. Community is all of the populations from a particular area, so all of the living things in that area. Ecosystem, all of the living organisms and non-living components they interact with in the area. And bio biodiversity, the variety of life on Earth, the range of living things in an area. Okay, so that's essentially it for this particular video on ecosystems definitions. The next thing we're going to go into is food chains and food web. Okay, so hopefully you should feel fairly comfortable at defining these. If not, I really recommend you go back and practice. I realize niche is up there, but we cover niche a bit later.